than this one? Yeah. This guest, too? This guest. Awesome. And that is the one, the only television analyst of your Sacramento Kings, Katie Christensen. Katie, good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you guys? Doing great. Doing great. Um, searching, though, Katie, you're for that. A, you're one man down, huh? We're, we're a man down, but, you know, the show goes on, and, you know, he, he will rally, and he'll be back and better than ever tomorrow, I think. Oh, it goes on and probably a lot smoother, right? Yes, exactly. No comment. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Just, oh, poor Dave. I hope he feels better. He, I Fair think he's fun. still a little sour that you turned down his uh, invite to the Who concert. Yeah, you know, I get it. He he kind of, you know, he gave me, you know, a hard time over it. But listen, there's so much going on. We're going, we're about to leave on a road trip. Yeah. I've got a million games to watch. It's like, ugh. I'm going to, I'm going to sit this one out. Okay. You know, parenting stuff too, you know, no big deal. Pa- parenting work, Life. you know, response, responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Katie, this team is still searching for its first win. They're Owen three, a lot more basketball ahead, but what would you say if you could put your finger on uh, maybe one key reason why they, why they don't have their first win yet? I just think that they're trying to figure out, you know, how to play together uh, for 48 minutes. I mean, we've talked about that a lot with this team, but when you look at the changes, obviously, the new coaching staff, new system, a lot of new players, they looked really, really great in the preseason. Um, but the reality of it is, is, you know, you kind of look at, I don't know, you can kind of draw some comparisons to the Pelicans team last year, right? When Willie Green came on as their head coach and they struggled early, you know, and everyone thought they were going to be, you know, just a, a, a bad team that was going to take them a while. Well, it didn't take them, you know, as long as people thought. They really turned it around. And, and I think it's just about cohesiveness and, and getting on the same page and still, like, learning and trusting in the system on both ends. Katie Christensen joining us this morning. Katie, when it comes to individual players, obviously, um, you know, we've been highlighting some of the struggles of different guys. Uh, someone I've been a little surprised with that they've struggled out the gate so much is Davion Mitchell. Do you kind of equate that to the same thing, the cohesiveness of the team overall, or do you see anything in Davion's game that's really laboring right now? No, I think it, it comes down to kind of some um, – some minutes that aren't he he doesn't know what his role is and what you know when his number is going to be called and I think that that is totally normal at this point in the season Mike Brown has had a bunch of different groups out there a bunch of different rotations like knowing as a guy coming off the bench like I'm coming in you know I'm going to be the first person off the bench or I'm going to be the second person off the bench you know it's really important to kind of mentally prepare and to know your roles players really thrive in those situations but Mike Brown and this totally okay because we're three games into the season I think he's still trying to figure out like what what groups work well together when he should bring certain guys off the bench why he should bring certain guys off the bench and in that last game against Golden State I mean my goodness Davion got in early foul trouble as a defensive player that completely rattles you and takes you out of the game from the very beginning and I thought it was it was frustrating, you know, calling the game and watching it, but the foul situation um, in the first half of that game, both Terrence Davis and Davion coming off the bench got in immediate foul trouble. Both of them, I think had like four fouls in five minutes. And eventually in the second half at halftime, they took one of Terrence's fouls away. But I think that that has something to do with it. And then, you know, it's just, I think Mike Brown and his coaching staff, trying to figure out rotations and groupings and timing of rotations. So I'm not that worried. Davion looked so good in the preseason. His shot looked so good. He's had a rough start offensively, but he, that's not going to go away. He's not going to play well in the preseason and then take five steps backwards. So I'm not really that worried about Davion. It'll all get ironed out. Katie, I know one thing they say in football, like maybe to an offensive lineman, like, you know, you can try to hold on every play because they won't call them all. Um, and so maybe if you just keep establishing that, that's that's yeah. what you can do. This team, it, it looks like they're being more aggressive. It looks like they're trying to defend better. Yeah. But that defend without fouling, uh, they've been fouling and they've been getting called for it. So do they have to change what they're doing or just keep this up and, and maybe think the whistles will slow down on them? Oh, gosh, Jason. I it, it might be a combination of both. It might be the officials, like, adjusting to the fact that they are playing more physically and are playing more aggressively than, than this team did last year. And listen, reputations follow teams, whether or not the personnel changes or not, right? 
Um, and so I think you just have to, you have to be patient and establish that. But, you know, Mike Brown is always talking about leading with your chest defensively. And listen, as frustrating as some of these fouls are, it's their, their ticky tack, their hand fouls. And if you, if you become disciplined enough to have that mantra ingrained in your head of leading with your chest, pulling your hands back, officials are going to give you more leeway with the physicality if you just remove your hands from the situation. And so, you know, Rashawn Holmes is someone that he, he kind of struggled the first couple games. I thought he did better against Golden State in terms of, you know, leading with that uh kind of, you know, discipline on defense, which is lead with your chest, keep your hands out of it, the verticality. There's been some really great examples in the three games this year of the moments when the team and individual players are really, I'm seeing changes defensively. But now it's about doing it consistently and just getting that ingrained in your head so that it's second nature. Like when that Clippers game, like, listen, I could watch the Clippers play de- defense every night. Like that defense is so dialed in and they're all on the same page. And that's the direction I believe that the Kings are heading in. They just, it's so early in the season and it's so new. They just need reps. They need time. And I think that it, it will get there and you'll see massive improvement. Katie, I agree. You are seeing, you know, improvement in spurts. How much of that in your mind is due to the fact that the Kings are a lot bigger on the wing this year. It feels like with Herter, with guys like Casey Paula and Keegan, do you think that's made a big difference? Size is, is a huge advantage in the NBA. Yeah. I think that it, it's made a difference, but it's also like mentality of players, right? So, you know, Davion is not a big guy, but Davion is a dog defensively, right? Terrence, Terrence is actually a really good defender, but for him, it's about discipline, right? There's, there's times last year where it's like, my goodness, he didn't resemble at all the player he was when he was traded the previous season from Toronto. I mean, he played so well. He was defensively just getting into people. And then last year he was a liability on defense at times. And then, by the end of the season, well, by the end of his season, which I believe was January, if memory serves, you know, before he got injured, he was putting it together. So players have to consistently hold themselves accountable. And I don't think size or anything like that. It, I've never believed that. I was an undersized player. It's really just about mentality. But the size helps when they when they go small, if you will. And I have liked Mike's small lineups. I mean, I, I want to say, was it the, the last home game against the Clippers that he went small in the fourth quarter and they, they were able to switch, you know, all five guys and, and there's some different lineups he's toying with that. I'm like, oh, that's intriguing. That's interesting. And they're small, but they're, they've got a lot more size when they go small than they did last year. Katie, it looks like yesterday at practice, Keegan Murray worked out with the uh, starting group. I think it's just a matter of time there, and we know he's been playing a ton of minutes. But if if we pencil him in as a starter, what impact do you think that does to start games for this team and then really how the bench looks if Keegan becomes a starter for this team? Yeah, you know, I think everyone is really wanting Keegan to be a starter. I'm curious um, when, if Mike goes that route, um, that I'm interested to see, you know, who is removed from the starting lineup. Harrison Barnes has not played well to start the season, but listen, Harrison Barnes the last several years has, has probably been the most consistent king on this roster. So I'm not worried about his start. Um, but when it comes to Keegan, so if he's going to come in and play with the starting unit, it's going to free some things up, you know, for everyone involved, including him, because now he's, he's, you know, playing around, De'Aaron Fox, Montes Sabonis, like scores that the defense really has to key in on. Um, and it might get him some easier shots. But I'm sitting here going like, no matter what group he's been in there with, he's gotten easy shots. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I, I, I just, now my concern, <laughs> to be honest, is okay, if you're going to put him in the starting lineup, who's going to be that guy coming off the bench? Who's that sixth man? Who's that guy in the second unit? Because for this team to be successful, that second unit has to come in and be able to score. And up to this point, in the couple games he's played, it's been Keegan. So <laughs> that's, you know, these are all questions for a coach that they have to figure out. And it's really, you know, I'm glad it's not my problem. But <laughs> Keegan, Keegan was closing games. So yeah. 
I wasn't, wasn't really worried about that. So we'll see how Mike kind of messes with it and what he decides to do and, and ha- what the ripple effect of that is, if you see what I'm saying. Yeah. Well, we'll see if these practice day or days off and some practice time, it will be valuable for tomorrow's tough matchup against Memphis. We know you'll be on the call there. Katie, we thank you for joining us. We'll talk to you next Wednesday and we'll see you at the arena tomorrow night. All right, fellas. Have a good rest of the show. All right. Thanks, thank Katie. You. Thank you. That's uh, Katie Christensen joining us there. Uh, we've got more to get to, including it's Wednesday.